What's going on, everybody, and welcome. You're watching or listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are going to talk about reconciling competitive spirit versus cooperative spirit in training. Not competition, but in training. So stick around. We'll talk more about that, of course, if you're watching. You can see Andrew's here with me. There I am, in the frillash. <laughs> Could you be in anything else? You could be here in spirit. I could be in here in spirit. Yeah, I could. I wonder how many people are here in spirit Who knows? right now. I have no idea. <laughs> I am Jeremy Lesniak, host, primary host for the show. You're a host for the show. I, ca I can't just say host for the show anymore. I tell people I co-host. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm also the founder of Whistlekick, where everything we do is in celebration and support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to know what that means, if you want to support us, if you want to check things out, go to whistlekick.com. Ton of stuff going on over there. All the projects, all the products. And if you see something in the store, speaking of products, there's something there that you like, use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. We've got everything from protective equipment, training apparel, uh, casual apparel. It's over there. Check it out. Now, if you want to go deeper on this or any other episode of the show, because they're all available for free, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the place to go. And you're going to find a separate page for each and every episode with transcripts and links and photos and videos because we bring you two a week. And why do we bring you two a week? Well, we're trying to connect, educate, and entertain you, the traditional martial artists of the world. If you appreciate what we do, maybe you want to support us. Like, you could buy something, like I said, but you could also tell people what's going on. You could leave a review somewhere or support our Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. You can get in on the Patreon for as little as two bucks a month. But the more you're willing to throw our way, the more we're going to give you back. We do exclusive, yes, exclusive audio, video, uh, behind the scenes stuff, book drafts, uh, program drafts. People who are in like the $25 plus tier definitely get their money back in that. So it's, it, we throw a lot of stuff out there at people and uh, they don't leave. So everybody wins. Okay. Here's right. the intro. Competition versus cooperation. Now, I don't remember the genesis for this idea, but this was, you said this was my idea. You yep. know, do this. Yep. And where I'm thinking of it, if you've been training for more than, I don't know, a week, <laughs> you've ended up with someone in training who's a rival. And it often happens where people will start roughly at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'm better than that person. Oh, 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 they just passed me. Oh, they earned it. And, and you get there, there's, there's a, a healthy, competitive spirit mm -hmm, absolutely and there could also be an unhealthy competitive spirit and then you've got you know kind of the the far end of the spectrum where everything's just cooperation right and how do you balance them because you might initially think oh well you know don't don't worry about competing with others but for a lot of us that inspires us and makes us better and we try a little harder how about you yeah i absolutely and i i think it's inherent in everyone's psyche, I think, a little bit to have that. But I especially see it in kids mm. a lot. That competitive wanting, you know, seeing how you are progressing opposed to someone else yeah. and wanting to be better than that other person if they're better than you. I see it in kids a lot. I even see some instructors leveraging that, playing certain kids off of each other, especially mm. if they are similar age, similar rank, similar skills. Oh, yep. well, yep. you know. Or sometimes I see the exact opposite where you get, you know, the new white belt in the back of the class and they're, they're trying hard, they're busting it out. And the instructor pretty much shames everyone. Oh, well, you know, here's this younger, less skilled new student who's crushing it and the rest of you are slacking off. You know? Yeah. I, um, I think it can be done well. I think it can be done very poorly. Yeah. And, and that, that's a tangent that we could probably spend a lot of time on and I don't think we should. Uh, if people want, we can go deeper on that. Not today. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, we can go deeper on that as another episode if some people want us to just let us know. By the way, uh, if you want to give us some feedback, uh, easiest way, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. But the title of the episode is about reconciling. Mm -hmm. How do you find balance between the two? Because on the one hand, we know, as you said, a competitive spirit exists in all of us, mm -hmm. even if it's only a little bit, yeah. and it can be really beneficial, especially in difficult times of training. On the other end, 
most of us should be training for ourselves and for our own reasons, not just to be better than other people. But that can be difficult to do sometimes. And yet, I think the further you progress, the more valuable it is. If your why is contingent on somebody else and that person you know, fails from class, then your reason just then, left. Then your reason is gone. Right? Yeah. So you need both. But where does it go? Like if, if we if those are the two ends of the spectrum, like where in the middle do you go? Yeah, that's that's the difficult balance. You that's know, trying, the part of the conversation. Exactly, exactly. Trying to find that balance. Um, you know, I do think competitive nature can be a really good thing, mm-hmm. but it's finding that balance of where does it step over the line to become detrimental to you mm-hmm. yourself and your own training. What would be some examples of it being Detrimental, unhealthy. Um, when you put blinders on and that's the only focus you have. If that's the only thing that you are interested in, that might be an issue. Because then it becomes you're driven to do this one thing and nothing else matters. And I think having that type of mindset in any endeavor can be really detrimental. Absolutely. I think the easiest example I can come up with, I've known a number of of like kind of adolescent kids who went to class because they didn't want someone to outrank them. Mm. They didn't want to be surpassed in rank by someone that they were similar age, similar rank. They start at the same time. And a lot of times these kids go to school together, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. part of their identity, you know, this person and that person are the same rank. They train in the same place. They go to competitions, whatever. And you know, I've had kids come to me, they're like, you know, I'm kind of kind of bored, kind of bummed. Well, you know, take a break. It's okay to take a break. Yeah, but then so-and-so is going to get promoted over me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. And I think it's a little bit easier to use these examples for children because kids are a little more honest yeah. with their feelings, their emotions, and their, their motivations. When I think back to being a kid, I was absolutely motivated to leverage my place in the school as part of my identity Mm. you know growing up i was you know i mean big shock i was a nerd still a nerd (laughs) i've talked about that on the show quite a bit and at school you know i was i was if not the nerd you know one of a very small group that was kind of looked at as like oh nerdiest kids in school but i had martial arts to lean on Mm -hmm. you know not not just in training but in competition and it was something that kept me fired up knowing that i was better than most of the people in the school Mm -hmm. whether or not that was true that was my perception that's how you felt and you know putting on my gi back then was like putting on my my superman Mm -hmm. costume my batman armor whatever yeah and it really helped me through some dark times so there's a positive aspect to the competitive nature now i wasn't necessarily competitive with individuals and actually there was someone the instructor's son was someone who uh, i was competitive with even though he was a few years younger because there weren't a lot of kids that stuck with it long term so Mm -hmm. it was kind of like him and i but for the most part it was good do you have any stories like that from your um, you started later than I, I did? I did. I started I didn't start training until I was in high school. So a little bit later. Um, but I see this type of thing all the time in my other aspects of my life in Ooh. terms of the the drumming aspect because I teach a youth band. Everyone in the band is under the age of twenty one. And to be and to be honest, most of them are under the age of like fifteen. Oh, okay. So they're they're younger kids, and some as young as ten years old. And so that competitive nature within that organization also is inherent, and it can be a good thing as long as it's not the only driving force. Um, but seeing two students push themselves to work to get better than the other. Is a, is a good thing for both of them. They're getting better. They're learning more. They're get, gaining more experience. But it's important that it not become the only driving factor. That's the, yeah. that's the issue. So how do you head that off? How, do you, how would you, as a parent or a higher-ranking student, an instructor, when you start to recognize that 
the competitive aspect of the motivation or the lack thereof, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I think even though it's easier to point out where it is problematic, is yeah. the lack thereof can still be problematic. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, here's a good example. Someone is sparring and they care so little about winning, scoring points, being better, that they just don't spar well. They don't put any effort in. Mm -hmm. That would also be bad because... Yeah. You know, if, if they're not motivated there, they're not developing a skill set that could save them in a confrontation, right? So, like, that motivation to win, to be better, mm -hmm. has some healthy applicability. Pulling it back, how do those people help that student who is too focused on the competitive nature? I don't, I mean, there's no simple answer for sure. I think it's important because it depends. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of factors, yeah. you know, like for, for me, I try when I see a really, really, really competitive, you know, when I see that competitive streak in someone and that's all they're, they're focusing on, my goal is to try and have them focus on other things mm. that, because generally let, let's say you and I are the ones that are, you know, competing against each other. And I want to be better than you at this thing. Um, what I would do is have, try and recognize have that student recognize something else that they maybe do slightly better mm. you know like if if i am doing this one thing better than you so you're striving to beat me well there's probably something else that you do better than i do mm. because nothing is one dimensional you know there's yeah. there's lots of aspects to what we do mm. and so helping students understand that there are more than one aspect to what we do and that it's okay to be better at one than the other and you work towards bringing them all up equally um i i think that can help to dissuade that competitive nature sure for me it falls back to here's a word we use on the show all the time ego mm. and recognizing that if, if this is the result it is probably especially in kids from a lack of, of comfort in who they are that their self-esteem is suffering and they see that this aspect of martial arts and not being the best or not being better than the people they identify as their peers is leaving them with a perception of lack, mm -hmm. that they are not good enough. And pointing out other aspects of their training where they are really good, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think can go a long way. The younger the person, the harder that is. And let's face it, there are some martial arts students who just, you know, they're not good at anything. But maybe they show up. Mm -hmm. Maybe they work hard. Maybe they smile. Maybe they're always kind to other people. Maybe they always pay attention. Right? There are aspects to the personal development side of martial arts that are always there. We can always find something. And if you can't find something, you're probably not being observant enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as the person ages, and, and you know, let's talk about adults in a moment because that's a whole different dynamic. Yeah. But as the kids get a little older and you can start to have a real conversation with them, you know, after class, outside of class, and help them understand that, yeah, we need each other to move forward in martial arts, but it is still a individual sport. It's still a personal journey. And pointing out where in the adult class or among the older students or the instructor themselves, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm having a conversation, let's say with a kid in my class and, and I'm, I'm the instructor, am I trying to be better than anybody here? Well, no, you're the instructor. You're already better. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. But if the only reason I do something is because I want to be better than somebody else, does that mean I just stop because I am? And that's going to get some wheels yep. and help them yep. understand. Get those gears turning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about the adults. Sure. Because mm -hmm. the competitive aspect of martial arts for adults can be much quieter and much more detrimental, especially to the culture in a school. You can have one adult come in linger for the wrong reasons yep. and destroy a school 
Yeah, they can be, and if you're not careful, they can become cancerous. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I've seen it happen. Mm-hmm. I have seen schools. I won't say I've seen a school close because of a single person, but I've seen definitely seen people quit because someone came in wrong reasons. Yep, instructor didn't do anything about it, and they bailed. It's not good. No, I've seen it as well. Okay. First off, how do you recognize it? Let's start there. How do you recognize someone training for with, with too much emphasis on competition? We could say it another way. How do you spot someone training for the wrong reasons? That I don't I don't know that I have the right answer for that. Because again, there's so many different little things that it could be. Um, could be someone being too aggressive in sparring. Yep. That's the biggest one I think that I've seen. Anytime in partner work where a student is going. I, there are two ways of concern. Mm-hmm. They're going harder than they need to, and they have enough experience with what is going on that they could dial it back if they wanted to, right? Yeah. Sometimes you get some new students, especially like big guys yeah, yeah. who start. They don't and, know better. And they're, they're like, they don't know how to be soft. Yeah. Right? So I'm not talking about that. But someone who's been training for a little bit and they're constantly smashing other people, or it's not everybody, it's only certain people. Yeah, that they're going really hard with. Yeah, and it could be the people that are better than them, and so they go harder for that reason. Um, or, or, or it could be that they understand that they could go easier, right? But they... Okay. They're reinforcing their place in the pecking order. Correct, yeah. Um, and, and the other thing is someone coming out and sparring too hard Okay, everybody like gets exuberant and that could happen. And if the instructor's like, hey, you know what? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. You know, but they can't do that. They continually on a regular repeated basis. Yeah. The, I, and that I think is where we're going to see it the most. It tends yeah. to occur in free form movement, partner work. And as a good instructor, you're going to see it. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to guess in your time, there have been people that you've trained with that you did not want to work with. Oh, and yeah. when the instructor said, okay, grab a partner, you're like, I am working with anyone but them. Yep. <laughs> I have had those people. And some of it, in hindsight, was me. Hmm. Because I didn't want to compete with that person. Because I knew if we got together to train, we were going to be competing. Yeah. And it wasn't going to be healthy. I didn't have the the understanding back then. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, it's a little bit easier because if someone's being a jerk, you know, I have the skill to do something <laughs> about it. I didn't when I was, you know, 110 pounds and five foot two. Not that that was much shorter than I am now. <laughs> but I weigh a lot more. Uh, are there other ways that's going to surface? Because I'm thinking of some. <sighs> I I mean, the only other thing I can think of would be from a, because if it's solo stuff, if you're just doing forms or whatever, it is less, it is more difficult to be competitive with someone in that aspect, unless we're talking about actually going to a competition and wanting to always beat that person in a forms competition. Mm-hmm. But mo- I think most of this that we're going to see is going to be two people actually, you know, confronting each other and working together. Uh, are there instances you can think of, of solo stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So let's say as an instructor, you notice that when a certain person, usually someone they're lining up near or next to is there, someone does really, really well when they're not there, they stop caring. Hmm. You know, you go from, you know, eight or nine out of 10 to five out of 10. It doesn't happen often with adults, mm-hmm. but I've seen it. Hmm. Okay. Secondly, and this is this is far more nefarious, intentionally undermining what someone else is doing, either by going to the instructor and saying things, um, by attempting to correct people, either in outside of class, especially you know if you and I come up together mm-hmm. and let's say we're both reasonably equal at our skills, you know like. If I'm way better at forms and we both know it and we've trained long enough together that I know you appreciate if I'm going to point out something in your form that maybe you're not doing quite right. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But if we're roughly equal or you don't appreciate and I know it, 
and I'm coming to you, or, or even in the middle of class, hey, make sure you do... Blah, 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 blah. That's the same kind of stuff. Mm. One of the things I'm, I'm fond of telling kids if I'm running a class, you worry about you, it's my job to worry about all of you. Yeah, yeah. If you're focusing every bit of energy you focus on other people while they're training is energy you can't dedicate yeah, to. Yeah, you're missing training. out on your own. Yeah. Yep. So that that's kind of the general heading of, of where I would see that individual stuff come up, but it's not often. Yeah, I, I could I could see that. That makes sense. Okay. Right on. Anything else? No, I, I don't I don't have anything else. I, I think I think that's a good place to leave it. So if we've missed something, if you've seen this, uh, if you have further advice, let us know. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'll pass it to Andrew. We'll talk about it. Maybe we'll do a follow-up. At the very least, if there's stuff that you want to add to this, please make sure you drop it in any of the appropriate places. Uh, the Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes. When these episodes go up, there's a place you can comment at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or YouTube. Mm -hmm. and there are common places all over the place. So don't be afraid to add to the conversation. Other people will benefit from it. So it only makes it better. It does. We are better together. Ha! As we just <laughs> talked about, but for the right reasons. All right. Like I said, plenty of places you can go to go deeper. If you like what we're doing, please feel free to help us out. We do appreciate it. It covers the expenses, you know, like this, uh, this really fancy thing. Fancy that we put over put over the TV to stop the glare. <laughs> why do we wear hats? Well, you know why. Because of the glare. I just totally derailed myself. That's all right. Patreon.com <laughs> slash whistlekick. Leave us a review somewhere. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever makes sense. And feel free to pick something up at the store. Whistlekick.com podcast one five. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great day. day.